Sup y'all, today I want to talk a little bit about typography and just ruminate and hack on something from scratch. So I just wanna build up a page that has nothing. In fact, we have something already on the page. It's a little unfair. Let's go remove the font family that I like to always put there by default. Okay, here we are. <laughs> so anyway, the goal today is I'm gonna add typography elements um, like H1s, H2s, smalls, lists, and I'm gonna style them and just kind of work through um, things I like to do or think about when I'm working with these items and just sort of build up a typography style sheet from scratch a little bit here as a self test. This is something I've just been thinking. I think about this stuff all the time and today I'm going to do it. So the first thing that I like to do is set the font family to system UI. I like to do this personally for pretty much everything on my page should be an unsurprising font for our users. They're here to just read stuff. So um, I don't want to do anything special to their text. Um, except when I really want to, like on a header or something. If I really want to call a title out, I think there's a good use case for bringing in other font families. But um, as a default, I like system UI. And system UI also tends to come with a lot of weights, so it can be really fun and there's zero load. So anyway, lots of reasons to use it. First reason though I like it is it's transparent to the user. They're never going to be distracted by the font. They'll be able to consume whatever it is very simply. Okay, uh, and I have some, let's go add some elements. So. We already see our H1. It's really classic to do like a H1 through H6 in your design system. Uh, let's see, three, four, five, six. All right, and we want to do that. I want to show what a small looks like also. Uh, I want to see what a paragraph looks like. Let's grab some meet the ipsums. Grab some lorem from here. How about a Lord of the Rings ipsum? Cool. Uh, that looks fun. You changed on me. I'll take the cat ipsum. I'm always, I've always been a big fan of that one. Can I even highlight it? No, I grabbed tuna ipsum while it was changing. All right, whatever. Here's tuna ipsum. Uh, and I'll save. We'll probably get something pretty unfortunate. Okay, that's pretty, it could be worse though. I think our paragraph is really what pushed it out of here and that's part of what we're gonna get into. Okay, so wait, we also need a UL and LI. And I also like two different types of paragraphs. This is just me. One is just from classic bootstrap. They called it lead. It had the lead class on it. Um, I'm gonna skip it today. I'm just, I just wanna tackle semantic elements. So we'll do like a li times five. So here's a, a list of stuff and we'll say apples. Aw, aw. I have conflicting plugins again. Bananas, uh, strawberries. <laughs> Wow, it's so weird being put on the spot to come up with fruit. Uh, grapes? I'm like, what do my kids eat? Uh, what are, I want short words. Uh, kiwi. Okay, here we go. Great. Fruit. Um, let's do an O-L-L-I. An ordered list versus an unordered list. And then we want a definition list that's going to have two definition titles. Oh, see, I can't really like hack one of these together, can I? Because the, the structure is a little weird. Okay, whatever, we'll say DL. Uh, we need a DT. I want to be like um, d details one. <laughs> no, let's say, oh, here, we'll say genres. This will be like horror music or horror TV. And we'll say like movie one. It's just data entry. You're like, I didn't come here for data entry. Um, but I think it's kind of nice to see um, the elements that can hold the stuff. Okay, horror, and here we'll say comedy. Great. We can have multiples of these. This is why this list item is special. Okay. Two. Jeez. Look at what did I get myself into with the numbering. <gasps> okay. Um, other elements that are on a page. I mean, we have buttons, but we're not going to... Oh, let's, we can tackle a button. Um, submit. And we have links. link to somewhere and then we also have links that are like inside of a page here or inside of our our paragraph great let's make sure we cover that awesome awesome did I just say awesome I did not mean to I think I was reading the word shark and somehow said awesome <laughs> hey look at our button that's really annoying it got stretched that would be our grid doing it okay um I think this is plenty for us to go on today I don't want to make a long video I don't even know why I tell you how much time it would have taken here. So let's let's get started on this particular content. 
All right, so I'll save the font change and we can see the font change has changed these to an unsurprising sans serif font. This is the system UI. It will look different across, across different systems, um, which I like. I like that on Windows, I get a Windows looking font and on Linux, I get a Linux looking font. When I'm on Linux, I especially like it. There's something, uh, I don't know, there's something respectful feeling about seeing the typography like that. Okay, um, I'm going to a modifier paragraph first. Our paragraph is causing this whole thing to be full width, and that is annoying to me. Like if I close this, or just not even close it, look at this. This is basic web responsive typography. It's liquid by default. Look at it fill the glass. Here's its glass, it's, it's the container it's in. We'll come to the container it's in, and just look at it stay full. And it will stretch until it is done, and look. Now our content is in the center because our content is being um, centered as it's so because it has wrapping elements and we want the whole chunk to be in the center. So we've centered it as a chunk. Well, when one item is going full width, you can't really horizontally center it. It's only vertically centered. We reached full width by uh, our paragraph here. So that paragraph is really obnoxiously long. That's not easy to read. It looks terrible. No designer will ever make a style guide that has that. So I'm going to say max inline size, which is similar to width, except this is an international uh, way to talk about width. This will always be the width in any language. So the language characters can go in any direction. You don't have to care. All you care about is the legibility of how many characters does the eye have to track, right? You don't want the eye to track more than 40 to 70 characters in its inline direction, which is your reading uh, direction. I'm doing this because I read that way. <laughs> Other people read this way. Um, and anyway, this is just really nice. So I'm, I'm going to use a character unit in here. I'm going to say 40 characters. You could use rem or other things, but I like 40 characters for my paragraphs usually, and that's actually too small. Let's go 50 characters. That is somewhere nice. Now, if I was like an article or something, I might go for 60 or 70 characters. So I tend to fluctuate between 40 and 70, depending on where it is. Um, so anyway, that's kind of interesting. Uh, different, different use cases for different uh, inline size maximums based on characters. So uh, headers. Oh, we'll find that out with headers here in a second because our headers can't all just say ready player one. They have to be realistic and they have to be long sometimes. Okay, we'll get there. We're get, let's finish our paragraph. Okay, our body uh, font size we haven't changed yet. So notice I don't have a font size percentage or anything on here. I like the font size to be whatever the browser and the user's preferences have, have decided. And I'm gonna build up from there. I try not to go under whatever that is. So like a 0.9 rem or a 0.8 rem, these are units that are under the minimum. Like one rem to me for font size is the minimum. A user is coming to the table with a preference and they've set it so that things look at one rem for them. And that means on my parents' phone, it's a huge amount of text. It's like giant text, but this is how they want to read their content as they browse the web. So I'll set that as a default. Okay, and I don't change. I don't change that here for my paragraphs, um, but mm, I might. Usually, I do, and the reason I do <laughs> is so confusing. Right? The reason I do is because I like to do something like font size one point two five rem. It's like twenty five percent larger than their chosen font size, and then I'll say font weight is uh, three hundred or four hundred, something in like a book or a reading width. And let's try 300. I want it to be slightly thinner. There we go. But not too thin, right? We're not going to like 100 or super light where um, I use those when I get into headers and that's what we're going to get into. Okay, so there's font weight 300 and we're going to want a line height as well here because I think our line height is a little crampy. Now I'm not going to use a rem here. I'm going to use just a unit and the unit is going to translate to percentage and that percentage will be intrinsic. That intrinsic means it's going to look at its own font size to determine its line height. This is something that you could think of it like auto, except you're saying auto with some rules. And I wish design tools had this, but they always make me go in and say like 48 with the line height and 24 for the pixels. And I always end up like doubling it in my head or one and a halfing it. That's literally what you can type into your CSS here. Line height two is doubling it. Line height 1.5 uh, will work with it. And I can see that our paragraph is almost a little too wide for me. Yeah, there you go. Right? I don't I don't need that that to be that wide. There's just no reason. In fact, I could go 45 and probably still feel good about it because like a little chunk of text like that is just more visually pleasing to me than some wide one. And I'm going to go slightly wider because this is just a generic paragraph. I haven't tailored it for any specific use cases. Um, but I'm giving it some healthy defaults. So it's font size 1.25, right? Just slightly bigger than the page requested. 
still it's not too large the line height is healthy it's not too much it's not too little and our font weight is a little thinner it's not too thin and it's not so this is a paragraph this is a paragraph i like to look at uh and i will do this as a generic style to my paragraphs um for now i feel good about that let's move on to our h1s and our h2s um i'm gonna do here h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 and I'm gonna zero out your margins. I'm gonna do that because, well, they still look fine because of their line heights, and and I'm just gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it because this is also what it looks like when designers make these. They want to see them stacked, and I totally empathize because uh, it looks great. So we have Ready Player One there as like a. I like that typography ramp, but what I don't like is it's dishonest. It's just not how headers tend to flow in a page for me. I tend to get headlines that are like, let's do more meet the ipsums. Uh, oh yeah, here, Boromir shirt. That seems like a good header. Okay, that's a headline. And well, should we use the same headline across all these for the large? Sure, because I think what's gonna end up happening is I'm gonna adjust their character width based on what's inside. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted to show. This headline is too wide and it's even going to get worse when I go do the typography to make these a better font size. So, okay, so we zeroed out their margins. We have two different types. Uh, I might even get rid of the duplication. I'm going to comment it out for now. I like the longer ones. Okay, our H1, um, we're going to set its max inline size of 30 characters. And we're going to take all these and well, I'm gonna take just, I tend to do this. H1 through H3, they get special treatment. They get a uh, special font weight because they're gonna be extra huge. And I think they look better when they're thin. This is also on you. Your headers can be extra thick. You could uh, increase their font weight, right? You could go bold 900 is your maximum. You could really go uh, bold with your headers. I, I see both as being really valuable ways to do your headers. Uh, I'm gonna go thin today because I like it when they're sort of extra big and thin, um, maybe call it more of an Apple style, I guess, um, thin and sleek. So uh, you can already see that what I did with the header is I maxed it out and it's 30 characters are not, um, you know, not that far off from the 50 here. And I don't want them to actually align. I want um, here 25 characters on my H1. Like headers, headers don't do well really wide and also uh, this is too small. Let's try three rem, like three times their normal font size for an H1. That is encroaching on an H2. It's like in between H2 and that's an H1 to me. You're only supposed to have one of these or so, unless, I mean, you can, there's rules around it, but let's make the H1 stand out. Okay, so there's our H1. It's line height is, oh, look, those are touching, but I don't see any ascenders touching descenders. Okay, we'll check that out here in a second to see if there's anything going on there. Like I might change a line height on an H1 uh, header here. Let's see. So there's one, so that's tight. 1.1 is where I like to put it generally. Cause look, you can see at the very bottom of the descender um, that were highlighted there. And then we kind of extend, this is where leading trim would come in nice. I could chop the uh, leading trim off the B there. Um, but anyway, let's go a little bit. Yeah, like our header can definitely be like at a 1.25 line height. Okay, let's do that. So again, another relative line height. Um, and here, I'll just copy this one over. Could probably give that to all of them and we'll see how much we how much we adjust in that later. So you could see all those just nudged a little bit, but they're all single line, so it's no big deal. This is still too many characters for me wide. We bumped the font size, so I'm not too surprised by that. Um, oh, that was cool because our header now is basically determining the whole width of this because it's so large um, and it's still too much. Let's go 15 characters. Mm, I think I think I'll keep it here for now. That looks like a cool, you know, good old headline. And I'm noticing something right off the bat that's annoying me and that's that our typography is black on white and I just get annoyed by that. So I'm gonna put our color of all, everything right now as HSL. Uh, zero percent so or zero on the hue zero percent on the saturation and zero percent on the lightness so that's essentially black um i'm gonna go five percent it's pretty much indiscernible or here let's go 25 percent that you should start to see that you can start to see turn a light gray 
Um, I kind of like it somewhere here, like 15 or 10%, where like most people can't tell that that's not black, but I know it's not black. And I know that I'm just not, I'm not, um, it's just like white and black. You try to salvage the usage of those extremes for cases where you really want to cast a hard shadow uh, or the lights where you really want to highlight. If you use these values too much, then they can't become a superpower for you to do visually with design. So anyway, my typography here is not black on white because I'm not trying to call it out massively, which is what I do with a bold. So if I had like an inline bold element here, that I would set to maybe black or, or like 5% um, black on HSL here. So something much darker, but give something an opportunity to pop by making sure that not everything is popping. I, I guess that is the tip here. Okay, so uh, that's fine. I might come back and adjust this, but this is what I mean by design system that I do from the ground up here is I'm gonna eyeball this and feel it out as I go. And we can even do um, some adjustments to these as we get responsive. So here's our paragraph. Still healthy, real nice, easy to read paragraph. Uh, our headline looks cool. And let's move on to H2. So H2, it's font size, let's say three rem. Uh, I remember liking that. Oh, H2. And the max inline size of it can also be 20 characters. I'm gonna keep that for now. I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious that that will stay. Here we'll go H3 at a 2.5. So now I'm just trying to eyeball my, my ramp here. I know that there's math ramps. People go do the math to really make these um, like a true uh, curve. and Or like they'll do them along an easing curve or something, which is very interesting. And I think mathematically fun and, and stuff. But... I don't know. Sometimes I like to just follow my gut and perceptually do, do things like I'm going to do right here because um, that ramp down looks good to me. I'm, I'm not really looking for like a curve here because things are going to get kind of like really subtle here in a second. So we got our H4, which uh, we can see here goes into a more bold state. It's uh, it definitely needs a boost. It's pretty I want it to be pretty close to that H3. So let's do 1.75. And now we're getting to the point where like these can start to extend. This can have 30 characters more, 40. And this one could probably have like 50. Ew, I take that back. You can have 30. And you can have 30. <laughs> there we go. Uh, uh, I want to see these in context. Like each of these needs a paragraph under them or something. Um, to really kind of see them in more of a con okay anyway whatever it's fun to see them in the ramp um, we've got there it's slightly smaller boulder okay that's cool because I can like I, I like that there could be some alternative usage there okay let's grab our h5 and this is going to be I can already tell we'll just drop it down 25 percent of the relative size ooh no more Although, you know, it's annoying when H5s and H6s are so small. I think it's annoying at least, but let's see. That looks good. And our H6, and I think we can increase this because the font size is shrinking. And we'll come to here to the H6 and we'll set a font size of, I don't know, I still want it to be, oh, so H5 is the same size as our font or as our paragraphs. Headers should never be smaller than the paragraphs, right? That just doesn't seem right. So our low end needs to be 1.25 here for an H6, which is a pretty rare use, but I don't care. Um, which means visually, I can see that like my ramp here, if I'm just decreasing by quarters of a rem from our H3, that that seems nice to me. Um, I don't like what happened there though. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I'm going to dry some stuff up here. Let's say H1 through H3 looks like they get a max inline size of, oh, look, it's just H1 and H2. The rest of them all seem to max out. See, this one actually can extend to 35. Yeah, maybe 40. And we'll let this one go to 35. Cool. See? Okay. And... Yeah, this one's an exception. I think there's times where that's okay. Times where that's okay. Hmm. Do we have a ramp here increasing? Yeah, see, look, that's kind of nice. 
So we, oh look, we almost ramp up five characters on the inline size as we drop in our, that's interesting. There's a relationship here to study. I don't know what it is, but I'm just eyeballing my way through it. Okay, let's look at our headers. I want, right now I'm just bugged by this body, needs some padding so that things aren't so awkward. Uh, and let's say like five rem on block. Great. Um, yes, that'll be fine. Okay, so now we have um, a responsive layout that's kind of looking a little bit more normal and that we're seeing the headers go down. And then here's our, is this our small? Small. Here's the thing about smalls. And this is a uh, scenario that I like to use a small. So here I'll put a small, let's do it. H1 with like a super rad, or here we'll do super rad. This is a combo I like to do all the time and I'll show you um, why and how I'm gonna fix that because that is not really what I intended with the small. Uh, maybe someone else, that's what they intended, but that's not what I intended. Um, so I will show you what I meant. And then here's our regular small, which will be pretty small in the end because it's gonna be sized uh, relatively as well. So here's our paragraph, here's our small. Oh man, I'm remembering um, other typography that we're gonna be missing at the end of this and our video is probably already getting long. Um, but it's uh, fig captions and captions. There's just and summary elements and summary details. There's other typographer, uh, type, typographic elements that we could be uh, enhancing. Okay, well anyway, we got this small. It's font size. I'm going to make this an M. And the reason I like it an M in this uh, case is because I tend to use it as a thing that I want to be smaller than other things. And so it should be contextual to its usage. And let's just call it like 0.8M. You could also use percentage. Um, and look, it's in this case, that was totally not good enough. Let's do 0.5. Yeah, okay. But see, what we're getting now here is um, that's awfully tiny. I wonder min so we'll pick the minimum um, of either 0.5 m or it should never go smaller than 0.8 rem maybe i want the max between these two yeah so that's cool so it's like in one case like if i look at this what is this computed font size um 12.8 and 32 Right, okay, so we have a small that's being used in two different ca use cases and is sort of uh, optimally, I've never written this before for a small, but I think that's uh, gonna stick with me for a while. We could even try clamping it too, um, which might read a little bit better because we're seeking, I don't know, maybe we could even, okay, here's what I'm thinking. Clamp, 50% is just sort of like where I think about it, go, somewhere around there, Let's see, how much does that change things? That allowed smaller to go much smaller. So I think what I liked about this idea was that we were picking the biggest and not necessarily trying to clamp to something optimal. Okay, uh, so there's how I like to treat smalls. I'm gonna go get rid of our example small because it's just not really fitting well, but just wanted to explain like what was going on there. And here this should say, uh, I'm a small. Okay. Here's our paragraph, our headline, our headers. I don't know, there's something. I think it's just because they're all the same text that they don't have a harmony like they had here. Here, maybe I'll just bring this back in and see how this looks. Oh, look at, we have, we have a flaw. Unless this is something in the design system that we like which I kind of like the concept of, which is like, these are our headlines and these are our headers. There's almost like, hmm. Well, anyway, there's a relationship there. Uh, my eye and mind want to go explore more. I'm just gonna leave that up because that is provocative. It also is good to help you contrast with this. All right, let's work on our lists and then um, maybe the button and our links. I don't know, this is uh, already kind of a little longer than I was thinking we might go, but let's check it out. All right, uh, let's collapse some things. Let's collapse body, collapse paragraph, and we're gonna go to the bottom of our document and start on our UL and LI. Um, these elements also have a legibility issue where like, okay, and look, I put apples and bananas in there, but that's just not what's usually in there. It's it can be lists of 
big paragraph content. And that's usually what's in there, I feel like. So I don't know why I felt so compelled to put apples and bananas in there. Uh, this is where the typography gets hard. Good. That is exactly what I wanted to see. I wanted to see <laughs> some of our typography just blow away uh, all of our hard work right now and kind of um, do its natural thing. And I want to go corral these um, little wild sheep here. So we've got a ULLI uh, max inline size. I don't think I like setting it. Oh, this isn't going to work. I went ULOL uh, max inline size because it's got margins and padding built into it. I like doing the max inline size at the LI. So let's just do that. I might not actually change the OL at, a, at all. And let's do a 40 character optimal reading width for a line item, for a list item. And look at that. So let's say it's inside of a paragraph. Would you want your list items to go all the way to the edge of the paragraph? I don't think so. Like this looks much nicer that this is sitting inside of here. It's nice that it's inset this way. It's nice that it maxes out and doesn't like, grow it's also a different font size though so here let's say font size it should be already inheriting um, and that's so that means this is the body font size uh, not the paragraph font size and that's okay so this is just being inherited from we could set this as 1.25 rem again just like our paragraph I mean I really like that which means I'm gonna do this take our paragraph and say if it's an li it gets the same treatment now what i want to go do is add some spacing here and that is going to be done at the let's just use tech tools and inspect so here's our li here's our ul notice there's no spacing between them i kind of want a gap so display grid gap one rim well there you go i'm going to go ahead and stick with that is really nice. And I like that the container here, like that the UL is still a full block width element. Like we're just we're just sizing things uh, optically and, and still allowing the document items, the blocks to flow. We're just telling the content. This is what I wanted to do in this effort today is, is really do like a typography um, focus because it's different. Your content is different than your boxes. And there's a relationship there. And sometimes you want one to push the other and sometimes you don't. And so this is like a scenario where I'm really liking uh, that they don't. So if this is in the paragraph now, does that mean it's also getting the max inline size? It is, which I've shortened it here, which is kind of nice. So I've given it an exception uh, in that I don't want it to extend like the paragraph actually. That's cool with me it was a little bit of an accident but i'm happy that it's there. i mean we talked about it but it was an accident that it was left over um so i'm cool with that let's collapse these i'm even gonna collapse their space here because it's noise 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 that i want to go away why can't that one collapse that's weird this one will that one won't huh, okay um and the small oh if they're like single line they're like collapse where Excellent. We've added the grid to the DOM, but we haven't done it here. So let's say OL, UL. This is going to be display grid. So grid naturally has items that go block um, top to bottom, like rows uh, you could think of. And then here's our gap is one rim. Cool. So we'll make sure we always have a space here. And I don't know. I might want more space. Let's see. I don't like how they're all the same content, so I'm going to go destroy them a little bit. Destroy, destroy, destroy. It's probably all the same kind of destruction. Um, you. Oh, I did one, but not the other. Here we go. All right. Yeah, so now we have some that are like short, some that aren't short, some with like widows. So we can talk about that in just a second. Here we go. This one's full on the end there. Okay. Look at me um, elegantly massaging my random content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is so random. Um, okay, though, I think these lists are almost done. The line height on my, pa I'm going to increase the line height on my paragraphs. 
to two. Uh, let's do 1.75. I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. Cool. I like how all that looks. Um, we could, in our typography, do some stuff to the numbers here. Um, like maybe even just kind of give them like a fun color. Um, let's see. So L -L -L -I and marker, right? I think our marker exists on the li. Yep. And we'll just say color um, red. Let's make sure it's working. It's working. Our color is going to be HSL 250%, 50%. We could use a custom property here. Uh, that would be great, and I'm not going to right now. But anyway, that's where you can do some customizing of that. Um, there's light amounts of things that you can do to the marker, um, and sometimes it's nice to only do a light amount of things. Hey, look at this. This definition list uh, definitely needs the same treatment as the rest. So here, let's say OL, UL, DL. Let's watch it get a gap down here. Excellent. Interestingly, though, I might not want gap because gap could overly space. Yeah. How am I going to? Oh, I could target these two or target. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to target the um, the title, the definition title that's not the first of type and give it a margin top. So we'll gap space everything and then we'll push um, any one of, one of these that isn't the first away from the previous set of DDs. OK, cool. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is we have the P and the LI here. We also want the DD and the DT, right? So now these are in the same sort of category as the rest of our content, which is really nice. And these are things that you can make. Actually, I'm sure it could be easily argued that the DD and DT shouldn't have the same font size as the rest because they're sort of like definition metadata types of things. Um, but we'll see. Also, I'm not sure I want a gap between the title and the first item. I think what I'm just annoyed by is the harmony right there right now. Okay, so if that's what we have there, we have uh, our LL, our LI is styled a little bit. Let's style the DT, have a font weight of bold. Yep, it's the little header item, so it should be bold. I don't think its font size needs to grow. This is something in the design system that you could choose to do. And the DD is fine, but what I wanted to do was say DT and uh, so I'm using the nested selector syntax. So I'm saying nth of type. So um, you must be a DD in order to qualify for this nth um, or for this pseudo selector. And I want nth of type. Um, that's um, let's see. So I want it to be not first. Oh, that's not first of type. It's going to have a margin top. See, margin still does show up on rim. I'm actually going to do character unit here, and that looks like it worked. Two characters. Yeah, really push me away from there. I want some clear visual separation between these definition items that relate to this and these that relate to here. And um, this is also something that usually has a whole paragraph to text in it. And we'll come in here and we'll fill in. Um, our, look, I did it again. Movie one. Here we go. Movie two. And sure, we'll leave the other ones just kind of here. This should have said in here. Lord, Lord of the Rings. Yay. Okay, now these look. These should look like normal paragraphs in here. Uh, their content is extending full width. Except I put DD in the same category as here, which means it gets the max inline size. This one is getting the max inline size. Oh, maybe I do both DD and LI get this max inline size. I think that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to take, I might even just be able to say DD. There is no DD and marker, so this is a little lazy, but OK. That I like. Look, our, our list items and our definition list items have a harmony. OK, I'm scrolling through this page. I'm pretty much feeling good about what we have. We have our link down here, which we haven't changed yet, which I'm not going to set a font size of it. I want it to just always grab whatever its usage is in. Like here it is in this paragraph, and it has no idea it's there. I would like to go set some colors and stuff on it, though. Um, and that's something we can do. And that's, well, I guess that's just simpler to do. Um, so anyway, let's just review kind of some of the typography styles that we wrote here, because I really wanted to just 
get into these like incremental layers that you can do on a web page to, to smoothen out the typography and set up a good base, or even just talk about creating a base. And let's go over the base we made. Um, dun, dun, dun. We have uh, an unsurprising set of fonts from my palette here, which is the system UI. And that's me just sort of opting into the whatever's coming in the platform. So this could be on your mobile phone. This could be a totally different font that is set there. This could be a different font that's set in your platform, like on Linux, uh, Linux or wherever you're at. So anyway, it's kind of fun. It'll uh, change. It's a dynamic request. And I've set the color to not black. I've set it to a really dark gray. And I think that that's important. You can adjust it and make sure that the uh, contrast is still there. So if we hover over here, hey, look, I didn't get the contrast inspector. It's because like the color is being set too far away. So if I take this and set it on the paragraph, I think we'll get our our score. We are still not getting the score. So uh, I don't know why we're not getting the score right here. I'll have to figure it out. Like, is this one giving our score? It is. See, we have a contrast of 20. That's good enough. We can check on this one. Contrast of 15. Um, excellent. Oh, yeah. These contrast scores are updating. We're getting new scores. I think this is the... No, that's still double A. Oh, that's what I wanted to see in the pop-up. That would have been the modern uh, score. Anyway, whatever, there's a new scoring system for contrast and it takes into account weight and stuff. This would actually be a really fun time to use it if it was, let's see, H1. Uh, do I have to set the color here just so I can look? Sure, boop. And oh, here's my contrast score. Okay, 13 or 134%. Awesome. And here we're way down here so we really we could go all the way here and still pass our our new modern ratio but also this depends on font size so cool there's a whole episode of me just playing with that scoring system and the different weights and thicknesses and colors that we have in here because they're all factors now in that score okay well anyway that was our just kind of like font family which wasn't that exciting and we're not going to do anything unique for the headers yet today but that's something you all can do later we did though set every paragraph every list item every definition list item and every definition title to have a sort of elevated font size that's uh, like 25% larger than whatever the user has set as their default. So if the user has said, I want ginormous text, we're going to give them just more slightly ginormous text. And I don't think they're going to be upset. Um, and folks who have it set to really little will get text that's just barely above little. And the times that will actually reach into that lower font size are things like here in the small. Very few exceptions will we put at the actual desired font size or underneath um, because those are the low end. Those should be the bottom of your font size, uh, at least in my opinion. So that's what we do. We built on top of it here. So everything essentially starts out at 25% larger font size. We also maximize the amount of width that the characters can go. We will never let characters go beyond 50 characters. Uh, we will go and wrap onto a new line at that case. And in fact, we got very uh, gung-ho about that and set that on our headers. Our headers all have a maximum uh, width as well so that they can't look. This one actually, this is flowing. I'm going to change it right now. It's just flowing outside of the rest. It looks off. Max, oh, look at that. It was already at 15. Here we go. 15 characters. Pull that in. Pulled that in a little too much. Let's try 17. That, see? Okay. Anyway, I'm happy with that nudge. I'm going to leave it uh, because now we have a, a system that says, here, let's even look at how many pixels is that? That's 600 pixels uh, of space right there. 600 pixels. We are not going beyond 600 pixels wide for our content right now, whether it's a paragraph or a header. I think that's really important as a foundational design concept. Um, you can start to move things into columns and let things fold into new spaces and still be legible content. The content remains legible. It's not, anyway, I think this is interesting. And we set a maximum. We don't tell it what width to be. And this is because we want this behavior it should be able to go small and, and not matter. And, and it has no minimum width requirements. Um, all it's gonna do is say, I never grow larger than. And I think that's an interesting way to size your content. So we also have font weight set to 300, which is um, not light or lighter. I've heard it called book before. It's like a book reading. 
because uh, it's not bold or, or unbold, but it is slightly on the thinner side. Um, anyway, I find 300 works really nice for me. And this is also just a request. Certain platforms might not have that font weight. So if you're a design system, this will be much more important to you and the specific font family that you choose. Uh, in this case, I use it mostly as a guide. I use it mostly as a guide. And then, um, yeah, I might layer things on later. We'll see. So it's like I'll layer on specialties. Uh, and our line height here is an important 1.75. Um, and that's being used for all of our paragraphs as well. So here is our paragraph with our line height. And I think that's a healthy amount of line height given the font size that we have. And we're using that same line height, that same font size to be consistent across all these different list items down into here even, which I think is a really nice choice. Our small, we ended up using a function to help us decide between um, something and just sort of like never letting a small go really small, but allowing it to still be very contextual to the usage that it's in. And that let us be a small inside of a big H1 or a small on our own and still be healthy. We went through all of our uh, H1s. We didn't necessarily have to get rid of the margins, though I do tend to do that very often, but we did set the line height to 1.25. So on a big header, I like them to be more vertically tight than I do in a paragraph. I think that's really common. There's also another thing that I could do to these headers uh, that's really common. Let's do it on the H1. Letter spacing of like two pixels. Yeah, did you see it pop out just a little bit there? Let's even do three. And the H2 is going to get a special one. Two. Cool. And that's because they um, they just don't they don't cramp well when they get that big. So it's nice to give them some space to breathe. Um, they're big airy headlines, and they look good with some letter spacing. I'm glad we added that little flare in there. That's nice. Uh, it goes well with our line height that we're talking about here too. I did use letter spacing as pixels. Letter spacing as pixels is a few and far between use case that I have for pixels. Um, because if I try to do something like 0 0.01 um, M, which I got a decent result there, I just find that these values are a little harder to deal with. Though, you know what I might be able to do is say letter spacing. Now I'm gonna have to put like a min or max clamp in there. I was gonna give it to all of them, all of the headers here. But I don't think I want that, especially not at these ones. So it might be in just H1 through H3. And if I gave it an M value, it would change. And well, hmm, let's try it. So if I take this out of here, cut, cut, we'll do letter spacing point zero one M. See, I just I think that value just looks weird. And it was a little smaller than what we had before. So how about point two M? Okay, so now we're adjusting all of these sort of equally. I think we want more. Okay, I mean, what's 05? That would at least be a number that I could like get behind. That looks nice. I like what this header looks like. Okay, we just give them a little bit of space and we can see it grows in space as we get bigger. That's nice, I like that curve. Okay, all right, I am uh, happy with that. I've never really put a responsive or a relative unit here and then had it intentionally adjust in different font sizes. Um, I think that worked out really nice. This is why I wanted to do this experiment though. There's just lots of new things happening in CSS and I haven't come, come through um, just like a base font style sheet and just done this work yet. Um, all right, so then what did we do next? Um, we increased, so we put the font weight at 100. We could also say lighter which that keyword is nice. I just like using it. Um, it's essentially gonna be the lightest value that uh, is there, right? I don't think lightest is one, yeah, it's lighter. Uh, okay, and we have our letter spacing that's being uh, relative to the font size and we're adjusting font size for each of these. Our font size is four rem, four times the um, user's default choice with a max inline size of 17 characters. What a random number. Um, it's just not, it's not that random though, right? Like, look, if we wanted to be really picky in our design system, we could have a single column come all the way down here and make sure that each of these um, have a max inline size of characters that just give them this perfect harmony. I'm tempted, but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> I think it might, it might be nice, but it might not. I don't know, I'd have to go use this. What's next is I wanna take all this, all these styles and go apply them to just like a raw markdown article article or something and see how we did. Like how's it do against content that, um, yeah, needs some style. 
Okay, we have font size, max and line size, and we went through and just did that to all these, right? Yeah, font size, max and line size. Oh, and we saw that there was a relationship that the amount of inline size characters grew as our font size decreased. So there's clearly this relationship here, and I don't know what the scale is, but it looks like if there's something there. And we have, uh, we took our OL and UL and DLs and turned them into grids so that we can gap space them. I thought that was interesting. Uh, we also, with our LIs and our DDs, we targeted them and gave them a max inline size similar to the paragraph, except we gave it a little bit of a smaller um, space, and that's to account for things like margins. These are being used inside here with, um, like, see, did you see the margin that's there? There's margin on these numbers as well, on these LIs, or at least there is on the OL. So we wanted to take into account that there might be, these might already be in a constrained space, and we want them to um, be a little bit shorter width than a paragraph. Um, I just like the idea of like columns of paragraphs and then we have like our bullets, our bullets, our details, more paragraphs, columns of bullets, maybe even quotes. Ah, we forgot block quotes. Okay, mm. there are so many native little natural content uh, elements in HTML and I wanna get them all on a page and style them one day. We'll do it, we'll do it one day. Um, anyway, so we did that to the DD and the LI here. And our last one was our uh, definition title. We made its font weight bold. And here, let's say bolder. It's the same weight. Great. And then we said, if you're not the first one, um, then you can have a margin top. So this guy's got a margin top. This guy doesn't. Right. Oh, sometimes Fizzbug is just so much better for showing spacing. Um, there. So one has it, one doesn't. Um, okay. And that is essentially the end of the video. Um, I don't want to continue this on. I feel like this is probably long enough, but I'm hoping if you're a designer or a developer and you're um, doing typography, or if you're curious about typ typography and doing any styles, that this was helpful, that this helped you um, understand some of the constraints that you're going to be working with. Like what is the natural behavior of some of these things and what are what really, how much pressure and how much styles do you really have to write to have something that looks elegant? Because um, I thought we got to something pretty elegant here today. And... Um, we didn't do a lot of work. I mean, we wrote almost 100 lines of CSS, but honestly, I think a lot of it was pretty nitpicky and um, stuff that is fun to think about. This was, this was, I don't know, I had fun writing these styles. I would do it again, you hear? Um, and yeah, I'll take you, uh, I'll, <laughs> I don't know how to say goodbye. Goodbye. Uh.